Good evening, gamers, and welcome to another episode of What I'm Playing Now. We are on episode six. This Woo-hoo! is pretty good. This is pretty good. We're actually doing this. We are a day late. Um, I've had a bunch of problems here. Um, I do have my co-host with me, Greg Martin, though, today. Yeah. So that I'm, is one I'm, good thing. I am back. It feels good to be back talking gaming, Joe. It feels so, very yes. good. Much needed. Yeah, last week last week was the first week I've really done um, a podcast ever on my own, and I was very, <laughs> very, very surprised that um, I was able to sit there and talk for about twenty five minutes straight without having any conversation with anybody else. I was when I was I was nervous when I started it, but when I was done, I went downstairs, looked at the wife, and I was like, "It actually wasn't that bad." I go, "I'm actually very proud of myself for doing that." You should have. <laughs> what you should have done is you should have taped a picture of me. <laughs> on your put, it on, put it on one half of my screen. <laughs> <laughs> like, and you could have, you know, you could have just imitated my voice. Greg, why are you not talking to me? What the hell, man? <laughs> and, well, as you all can see, I changed my profile picture, so now I'm not glaring at you. I'm just flipping you off. Yeah, I see that. I saw that the other day. <laughs> All right, this is the What I'm Playing Now podcast. You can find us um, and send us emails, what I'm playing now at gmail.com, Twitter at what I'm playing now, drop the G, and on Facebook, I still have it on the Facebook page. My dog has been sick, um, so we have been taking care of him for the past two weeks, and that's pretty much been my life. Uh, so my gaming this week has been very, very minimal. I have played a few things here and there and snuck in some stuff. Um, so we will just start talking about some news and things that are going on, and we'll take it from there, and we'll just do the kind of everything on the fly. So one of the news stories that I had found this week that I, I think I saw it on Twitter. Some people were tweeting about it right after the servers were shut down. Warhammer Online was shut down. I think it was around for about four or five years. I think it was five years, and I don't think you're a huge MMO, but MMO or but um, did you ever play Warhammer Online, Greg? No, I, I you kind of hit the nail on the head. I am not uh, okay. big. I'm not a big MMO guy. Um, so I kind of I, I kind of rage quit those. I did. I oh, did. I didn't rage quit. I didn't rage quit <laughs> Warhammer. Um, the game the game actually started out really good for Warhammer. I think I was in the beta, and then I picked up the the game. I think we played it for about six months. But I think I I think I had a six month subscription. But I think I only played it for about four months. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty solid. That they had the game was interesting in that you had it was one of the first games I I did a shitload of PvP in, and the PvP was really fun in the early levels. Uh, so basically, the way you had it, they had it broken down to like levels one to ten. When you would go into the into the PvP and and do do some of the fighting, you would go into people that were leveled from like 1 to 10, and actually I don't think you actually started PvP to like level 4 or something, I don't think you could get into it. So it was like the first levels were like 4 to 10, then you had like 11 to 20 or something like that. I can't remember the exact breakdown. It's probably been, if, if the game was 5 years old, it's been 4 and a half since I played the fucking thing, so I can't remember all that. But I played with the one guy that I worked with, we were in a guild together, and we had a flipping blast in the PvP stuff. The problem was as you progressed through the levels, the higher you got in levels, the more things were just completely broken. Some of the maps that were in the later levels just were not conducive to all of the abilities that you achieved and you and you obtained. So there were some maps that were just that just had lava everywhere and you would just go around and people were just punting you and doing knockbacks and stuff like that and you were just getting knocked back into lava. It was just some of the early stuff was just so so broken when you got into the later levels, and I think we made it up to, I want to say the mid to late thirties before we just kind of both hit a wall. And it was funny because he's a power gamer, he's a power leveler, and he even got to the point where he was like, "This just sucks." I mean, we weren't we weren't into the story anymore. The game just the PvP just wasn't as fun as the early levels. The best part of that game were the first ten levels. Which is not how you want an MMO. You want your later levels to be more fun, <laughs> and we I, I we never reached end game, so I can't you know really comment on that. But once we got to the one the one region, and we were we had reached, I think we were in our late thirties, almost hitting forty, and we, we we were both just like we were talking at work, and I was like, I'm kind of done, and he goes, 
I am too. And he, he rolled up some alt characters, and he went back when the game actually had gone free to play and played like the first 10 levels over and over again and just leveled up different characters and did that PvP stuff. And that was fun. Hmm. Um, but it was... It just we one of the things I think that probably hurt us in that game some was we weren't in a real good guild. We didn't know a lot of people that were playing the game. We bounced around between a couple of guilds. I think at one time he people were guild leaders were quitting and the two of us were the only ones playing and he ended up as guild leader there for a little while. Hmm. So it was just it was just completely crazy. Um, see, see, that's the thing about MMOs that, that turns me off is is the. Uh overly exagger- exaggerated social aspect of it. Right, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of... Yeah, I mean, I guess you kind of have to understand that growing up, I did not play... I have multiplayer games, you know, for like the Nintendo or whatever. Um, but I always did single player. And I'm so accustomed to playing games as single player that when I try to go into a multiplayer or massively multiplayer game, I kind of feel naked. It's a very uncomfortable experience for me, and I feel like a lot of people that do games like Warhammer or you know of that yeah cloth you know that it's a very competitive nature. And oh, definitely, definitely. And I and I just it's like I can understand playing a game to enjoy the game, but I'm not really playing a game to compete with other people and jump through the monitor and stab them in the throat because they killed me. Right. That's where I kind of just, you know, you guys can do whatever you want to do. You know, like that guy that just recently got a license to, or he actually is a certified professional gamer. Um, I heard about that a couple days ago or something. Some guy got, uh, like, I guess it's a, uh, an actual competitive sport now. Well, yeah, you have you have a lot of esports going on and everything, but I think you're talking about the one guy who was given a visa to actually play games here oh, in yeah, the yeah, US. Oh, yeah, that guy, yeah. Okay. I wasn't That's, sure if that was the story you were talking about or not, but I was like, I go, I think this is what you're talking about. See, this is this is what happens at Christmas. I start, you know, uh, I start forgetting things. Hitting the eggnog a little too hard. Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know if you've ever watched some of the esports stuff. I mean, there's StarCraft used to be is StarCraft is really huge over in Korea. I guess oh, it's yeah. completely insane. I mean, people come around to watch that now. I did watch this year's international, which was the Dota Two tournament that was have- held. I have seen the Dota ones. And I kind of like that. I can sit there and actually watch that. I, I actually may, had my wife watch one of them with me, and she was just like, I don't think she was really into it, but she sat there and was was very you know, nice in that she sat there. She really didn't say this is stupid or anything. I mean, because <laughs> she, she games. But she secretly, games, she, secretly she's thinking, Joe, this is the dumbest damn thing I've ever seen in my life. She she had never played Dota 2 before, and I, I've played Dota 2, so I understood the game. So I was trying to explain the game and tell her this is what they're doing and this is what the object of the game is, this is this is what it is and everything like that. And so, you know, she she kind of thought it was okay, but it was, I don't think I'd be able to ever drag her to a tournament. Uh, but I don't even know if I'd ever go to a tournament. But there's, I do kind of like watching some of that stuff online, especially when you watch some of the different strategies and the tactics they use, because you can, if you're playing a game like that, you can actually learn some things. Yeah. So, all right, well, we got sort of totally sidetracked off of oh, our yeah. initial yeah. story of Warhammer. <laughs> uh, Warhammer was an okay game. It's sad to see a game shut down like that. Uh, that always sucks. So, But we will jump on to the next story. Hearthstone... A uh, game that I'm still playing a little bit here and there. I haven't touched it in the past couple of weeks. Um, it sounds like they've actually corrected a lot of issues. It was supposed to go into open beta, I think, this month, but they've had to push that back. From reading the one article, it sounds that if you have not signed up for the closed beta, if you sign up for the closed beta, they should have all those invites sent out by the January 7th, I think I read in the one article. So... Even though it's a closed beta, you can still sign up for it and get into it, but they're not just opening it up to everybody yet. So, hmm. And it sounds like they're also not doing a server reset to where you're going to lose all of the decks that you've built and all the cards that you've collected so far. Oh, damn. I, because, well, I think people are actually paying cash to get some of the cards. So it's really going to be interesting to see if they let people, if they actually do a reset before the game goes live or not, and oh, res- reset the leaderboards. Because on Twitter, I know that they announce like weekly, 
like who the weekly leaders are on the leaderboard for all the multiplayer stuff. Wait, wait so there's actually like a, a, a part of my ignorance. I've never played Hearthstone before. Um, I just have the peripheral knowledge of you know you playing the game and then seeing stuff on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, they actually have like a, a, a digital store where you can kind of like buy cards with IRL money. And you can't you can't buy cards. You can buy gold, and then with the gold you can buy packs of cards. Oh, uh, okay. I thought it was so. one of those things where you basically pay to win. Well. Uh, from what it sounds in the one article I was reading, a lot of the people who are on the top of the leaderboards have earned their cards through playing the game and haven't spent tons of money on the game. If you wanted to play to win, I guess you could dump a ton of money into the game and buy a ton of packs and try to get all the cards that are out there. But it sounds like from what they said, they were looking at a lot of the numbers and the people who are at the top of the leaderboards aren't the people who are buying all the cards. Cool. So they're actually playing the game and playing it. I believe I believe when it's going to be released, it's going to be free to play. So you don't you 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 can earn you can earn gold by doing some of the daily quests that they have, which are basically like take one of your decks and go play against other players online and for winning with these decks, you can get like certain amounts of gold and everything, and then you could buy more cards with those. And I've done that. I've earned some gold because I actually had a pretty good deck that was put together that was winning quite a bit, actually. Hmm. So it's fun game. If you have a um, Blizzard account, sign up for it. I mean, it's yeah, you, I don't you know. should you should be able to get into the into the closed beta. I don't know if I have a Blizzard account or not. I can't remember. Just, just go out and create one. I can't remember. So, because I have, well, I have, well, I have Diablo two and three in there. I have my World of Warcraft account in there. So I had quite a few things that were Blizzard. I, have, I think I even have my original Starcraft in there. I never picked up Starcraft two, but I think I had the original Starcraft key, a key for that. I think even so. I did too on I the bought. on the uh, Commodore sixty four. On the Commodore sixty four, what game are you talking about? <laughs> Somebody's. You you you're definitely hitting the eggnog over there. I'm talking about you know good old StarCraft on Commodore 64. Uh, that was a great game, Joe. <laughs> All right, our next news story: Nintendo Direct. Direct to your home from Nintendo. Yeah, so they announced a bunch of things that are going to be coming out um, from Nintendo. I read some things about this. Nothing really grabs me to make me want to go out and buy a Wii U, though. See, that's the thing, and, and and I was reading that, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm sure if you're a Nintendo fanboy, you're probably wetting yourself right now. Yeah, and, I mean, there's there's some good things they announced. The NES Remix sounds nice, you know, but yeah. a lot of those games I had already purchased on the Wii. <laughs> well, that's the thing. So, it's like, oh, it's oh, like yeah. you either bought them on the Wii or... You have it on an emulator. Yeah, and my and my wife and I were talking about this the other day because she's listened to some of the podcasts and she knows since I have the PS4, that's the thing I've probably been talking about the most. And people might be, you know, like, oh, I'm a P, I'm a Sony fanboy. I'm not a Sony fanboy. They I are. have the newest console, so that's what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm fucking playing right now. Um, but you know, my wife was like, she goes, well, I really like the Wii and everything. And I go, yeah, we liked it, but think about how much we played the 360 and the PS3 way more than the Wii. I mean, when we first got the Wii, we did bowl a lot. We played some of the other games. Well, I played a lot of the other games. The wife pretty much just did the bowling. She really didn't play tennis or baseball or anything or golf. And uh, we had Mario Party 8, I think. I think that was the one we had on the Wii. Mm -hmm. And we played that quite a bit. And Mario Kart, that was out on the Wii. See, I love how every time a conversation about the Wii comes up, it inevitably goes to the Wii syndrome. And that's my coin of phrase for what happens when you pick up a console, play three games on it, set it on the shelf, and then look at it for the rest of your life. I mean, I did I did have some other games. I had the, I had the Zelda that came out. I had um, one of the other games I had bought on launch day. It was by Atlas, and I can't think of the name of it right now. They always make good games. Uh, they do, they do. I really like. I like a lot of their games. They're, they're some of the more. 
obscure. They're not more of the mainstream games. But uh, over the oh, but over the years, I've I've always really liked a lot of the stuff that they do. Uh, Persona. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, that, enough said there. So, um, I I hope I hope Nintendo can pull something together for the Wii U. A lot of people are saying they should just get out of the console making and just do games. They're not going to do that, people. They're probably going to release another console in a couple of years and try something different. No, they are they are Nintendo by does. no means hurting as bad as people say they are, even though PS4 and Xbox One are probably going to surpass the sales of the Wii U. It, they tried something with the tablet, and it, it just didn't work for them. Nintendo does not want to be another Sega. Right, exactly. They're not right, going cause, to. Because yeah, that's exactly what happened to Sega. They went Their hardware went the way of the Dodo, and now they're just strictly a software company and a pretty subpar one at that. Yeah, which stinks because I, I was a Genesis kid back in the day. I oh, mean, so was had, I, we, we had we had the Sega Genesis. So we had the original. We had the original N- Nintendo. But when it came to the 16-bit console, we went from um, Nintendo over to Sega. And the Genesis was one of my favorite consoles. As a oh kid. yeah, dude! I was that jackass that had the Sega CD and the 32X. We never had the 32X, but we had Sega CD. And we had, you know, Sewer Shark, oh, my Sherlock God. Holmes. Dude, we had fucking all that shit. Fucking we had, Sewer Shark, man. We had all turn that and, crazy shit. Turn and burn, dog meat. Yeah, that's, that's, that stuff was crazy back in the day. Did you have, did you have the Dracula game for Sega CD? I, th- I think we did. Oh, either, that or, either that or we rented it. The one where you're going to a bunch of bats? I'm going to have to try to pull, <laughs> pull out... All the games we had on the Genesis, because I know they're still at my parents' house. I'll tell you so, what, man. A classic one, Rocket Knight Adventures. I don't remember that one, now. Oh, dude. I don't know if I remember that one. You gotta, you, See, you we, gotta find that one. We played a lot of... Back then, since it was me and my younger brothers and a bunch of guys I hung out with and everything, we played a lot of sports games. So we would do a lot of NHL 93. We Ooh. had a lot of Madden going on. I mean, we 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 play a lot of the sports games and everything. I mean, so dude, the fighting in the NHL games was amazing. Was, oh, that was that stuff just rocked. That was that, that, you just that you stuff was to get awesome. To oh, oh yeah, you <laughs> just wanted to you just wanted to sh- shoulder check somebody and have their head smack the ice and that little blood <laughs> splat go everywhere. That was the fucking best. When you had the blood uh, splat come out, it was like, hell yeah! You would just jump up and scream at the person next to you. <laughs> like, yeah! They took the blood out in 95, man. I think they did, yeah. Yeah, but we, we had the one with the blood. Oh. So those were those were the good old days. And but yet again, I'm, we've we've derailed the whole conversation. Were, you know, you know what though? That's that's the, that's the whole genesis of this show. That's why I, I we derailment. Can, well, we can talk about whatever we want and what we played over the years. That's oh, yeah. that's the whole part of this thing. It doesn't necessarily mean what we're playing now, but what we played in the past. So what we played when we were two. Yeah. Well, that was I wasn't two. I was a little older than two. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I was two. It'll be nice if it'll be nice if Nintendo can pull things around. It's I, I'm sure some of the new games that Nintendo releases, like the new Zelda game and all of their staples, are going to sell consoles. So they will get a boost in console sales when those games release. Uh, yeah, don't worry. There's going to be another Zelda game, so there's going to be another console. Yeah, I mean, but I. The Wii U sales will never ever reach, and I don't think anybody could say that they will. Will never reach the sales of the Wii. No, you're drunk so, if you say they are. Yeah, uh, I mean, you're but just, but I was I was reading an article the other day where they were talking, they were discussing, you know, all the people out there that are saying, oh, Nintendo should, you know, just do software and stuff like that. And even the guy in the article was writing that. I think it was a guy that wrote it. You know, he said they're never going to do that. And I agreed with him 100%. I go, that's that's a really good written article. I can't remember who it was or where I read it. I think I read it on my Kindle Fire or my news feed or whatever. But I was I sat there and read it and I was like, I agree 100%. I go, they're not going to. And, you know, everybody that's just screaming FUD that just wants them to just do the software thing. So... Well, it's um, like, it, well, it's like it, I don't want to rattle this thing any more than we already have, but it's like could you imagine, and I'm pretty sure this was the argument that was made before Sega made the decision to become a software-only company, but it's like, can you imagine playing Mario on your Xbox? Can you tell me that you would, 
like like playing Mario on your PS4. It would be different. I don't. I don't know. I. I don't. It would be. It would be nice if you could do games across consoles, and I know that'll never happen. I mean, and that's it, what. That's mainly what the PC is for. <laughs> it's for a that's what, hey, you know what? They had that attachment for the ColecoVision that let you play twenty six hundred games on it. Yeah, I. But it's. Would I like to? I don't know. Would I if they ever came out? I might. I mean, it's I'm I'm not totally against all the Nintendo games. There are some games I like, and if I could do Mario Kart on the PS4, I think the wife and I could get drunk play Mario Kart on the PS4. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can go drunk driving, baby. That's you got to do it. That's the way to do it. So might as well do it on Mario Kart. Definitely. Uh, next story: Microsoft's releasing some original programming on 360 and the Xbox. I know this is not. Team. This is not Channel 9 either. No, no, it's not. Um, which I have watched before. It's not bad. No, it's not bad. Uh, they because Some of the shows they have coming out are going to be the Halo show that was announced back at E3. Um, is, that, they have, is that Red versus Blue? No. Or is this something different? This is something different. Okay. Um, this is the one that Steven Spielberg is actually involved with. Whoa, I did not hear wind of that one. Obviously, you didn't read the story I have put in the notes then. No, I didn't, so I'm still looking at the Nintendo one. <laughs> um, but they're coming out with some shows. There's a Halo show that they have coming out, a Quantum Break show, which is supposed to go along with one of the games they're coming out with, a World cup theme show called Every Street United. So it actually sounds like not only is Microsoft making this console that they want to tie into your whole entertainment center, they're actually starting to produce their own entertainment content besides gaming and everything. Well... I don't want to say besides gaming, that's almost going to supplement gaming, I guess you could say. Sounds like these shows are tied in with the games that are going to be released yeah. on the system. That, yeah. you know, that screams the wizard all over again. It's, I, don't, I don't know. With so many tie-ins, there, I don't know if there's really ever been a really good game show tie-in before, but with so many things tying over to different things... You know, game wise, it's it'll be interesting to see if this actually works for them. Mm-hmm. So, but it sounds like it sounds like they want to release this stuff sooner rather than later. It sounds like the guys that are running this are really pushing to get this shit going and trying to get more people on board and saying, "Listen, we want to do this, and we we're just going to." So, right. It'll be. I I still have the 360. I'm guessing to watch any of this shit. Everything on the everything on the Xbox, be it the 360 or the Xbox One, is behind the gold paywall. I no longer have a gold account, so it'll be interesting to see if I can actually watch any of this shit when it actually comes out. Because I am not getting another gold subscription right now, because it's just not worth it for me. I don't do online gaming. The games that they're giving you for free on the 360 aren't good enough for me to sit there and play. So. Well, I still have my 360. I, I, I let my gold subscription. It's in pieces. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask. It's, it's, a, ask. It's, a, it's a first gen that had, had a red ring, and I decided instead of sending it in, I was just going to take some bitch apart. And I did. And I fixed it four times, and every time it ended up dying again. So I was like, okay. I was like, I was like, Good how much, Lord. how much uh, ceramic and silver thermal paste do you have to put on this thing before it actually stops overheating? And uh, turns out, yeah, those original you use a whole tube. Yeah, those original ones were bad. Because I remember one of the first things I had bought for my 360 was the intercooler, and then I heard that people were that people were having that burnout. Because the power ran directly through it, yeah. And so they were saying that if you had those on there, it could ru- it could basically break your warranty. So I took my intercooler off and just set it aside. I think I have it in a box behind me, actually. You, you <laughs> I was know, looking I the other day, and I, I was digging through a box. There was a bunch of old console stuff, and I go, "Oh, here's the intercooler for the 360 I bought." That was a <laughs> fucking waste of money. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there was any other port to hook those up on, though. Like, now that I'm thinking about no, it, I, I no, don't think there were any there like there were any pins that you could plug that into that would run from the power getting to the board, and they just ran it through the power supply instead. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no, no. It 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 had the pass. It had pass through power that would power it, and that so nice. the power supply, I guess, wasn't designed to be able to handle that little bit extra load. I guess so. I mine. I never had a problem with mine, but when I started reading some stories online about it, I was like, I don't even want to risk it. So I just quit using it. But I don't. Who knows? And who knows if that actually ever helped the console stay cooler or not? I don't think it did. I mean, it did have the extra fans on there, so you would you would you would hope that it would, but who knows? So. One of the last news stories we we're going to discuss today is some of the sales going on right now. Steam's having their big Christmas sale, which uh, you can pick up a lot of cool shit on if you haven't. Um, I know good old games and Humble Bundles having some sales as well. Have you picked up anything during any of these sales? Uh, I picked up Gone Home on sale. Um, okay. I did pick up... Uh, Fallout 2, I did not get that when they were giving it away for free because I was a dumbass. You, that was that was the first week Vito was sick, and I had read it, and I kept meaning to come home to do it, but and I never did either. I was I meant to grab those three for free, and I was so pissed that I missed it. Yeah, so but I was, I, that was the week I literally did not turn my computer on. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, I picked up Fallout 2. And um, there was a third thing I picked up. It was a um, uh, no. The th the other thing I picked up was not part of this of the whole Steam GOG and Humble Bundle thing. It was a it's a uh, it was a visual novel uh, game from Japan I picked up. Okay. Uh, which is actually mentioned. Oh, that's cool. Way down at the bottom, so of the show notes. <laughs> so and and we'll we'll get to we'll my see, now, pronunciation one, later. One of the things that I was gonna um, put on here because one of the things when I how I kind of came up with the name for what I'm playing now. When I started my blog originally, I was gonna have like what I'm playing now, what I'm watching now, what I'm listening to now. Because one of the things I actually did the past couple of days, I really just wasn't in the mood to game while I was trying to nurse the dog back to health. Um, I sat and watched a bunch of anime on Netflix, and there I actually saw a couple of very, very good shows. You know, so I, we, I, we may have to have um a, what I'm what I'm watching now now part of the, of the <laughs> show where I can talk a little bit about some anime that I've watched. <laughs> you, you know, I'm actually kind of glad that I found somebody else that watches that stuff because I love. I mean, I I grew up on that shit, man. Well, I I didn't start watching it until. I start working at the comic book store, uh -huh. you know, after college. And working at the comic book store, everybody watched it there. So it was something that I kind of started watching. And then the more I watched it, the more I got into it. So Netflix does. Netflix actually has a pretty good selection of anime you can just stream. And uh, I sat there and watched a couple of first seasons mm -hmm. of a couple of shows. I think each season was like 12 episodes long. And, you know, I over the course of like a couple of days, I watched – probably 24 episodes of between those two sh two shows and it was actually really cool. I you know me being uh, I, I'm going to call myself this and I'm probably going to get fucking hate mail for it. Um me being sort of like an anime vet having watched anime for 10 plus years um I'm not really impressed with Netflix selection. Um Oh really? Oh no! No, it no, 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 no. It changes. It changes. It changes a lot. So. Well, it does. Check but, it because. But I like the really obscure shit. Like, there were some shows that were played back on G or no, on Tech TV when they had Anime Unleashed. Um, I can't find them things anywhere. But God, were those shows awesome! Which which ones? Uh, Better Man was one of them. Um, okay. Silent Mobius, which is actually a little easy to get a hold of, but it's expensive. Uh, Gatekeepers 21. And Serial Experiments Lane was another good one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, th those have not been on Netflix. See, a lot of the stuff we watched back then were um, Ranma One Half. That was the big one that everybody watched. Oh, yeah. Because this was, this was back in the early to mid 90s. Mm -hmm. I think well, I think it was probably around you know 90 between 93 and 95. I think it was. So uh, um, 
actually no, probably 95 to 97, 95 to 98, somewhere around there. Um, so mid to late 90s. And so Ronma 1 half was huge. Um, everybody started me off with like Ninja Scroll, Vampire Hunter D, all your basic ones. And then the series that I got into later on was um, Crying Freeman was one of my was one of the best series that I bought. I think I still have that on VHS downstairs. Wow. And I, and I have a ton of them down there. Um, but the two I watched were Dance of the Vampire Bund, which um, I think came out around 2010. That's good. And um, Okami-san and her Seven Companions, which was a really cool one as well. Va- va- the, the Dance of the Vampire Bund was really, really good. Yeah, and I was really su- I I was surprised at how much I I enjoyed that one. When I saw that one, I go, oh, this looks interesting. I I'm a huge vampire fan. I like the vampire one, so I watched that and I was I just couldn't stop watching it, and I just kind of burned through that one almost in a day. Oh man, we could go off in such a tangent on this anime shit, dude. Yeah. So <laughs> I I know I know I don't watch it enough to do a whole anime show, but uh, I could recommend those two to people. And they will definitely, if you have Netflix, stream those, and you'll definitely enjoy them. And it's they were they were both really good. So yeah, we need to we need to have like a meeting of the minds or something, and, and uh, <laughs> try to try to figure out where exactly the best place is to. And I'm sure people would also like to know this: the best place to buy box sets because it is actually not Amazon, and it's not any big box retailer here. Yeah, I. I don't know anymore. I mean, years ago, I would have just got them where I worked at the comic book store. Right. I don't. I, I. But I've been out of that for so many years now. I don't even know what I could recommend anymore for that. I. So. You know, I actually have a couple because I went looking. Um, but. Yeah, that because I know Suncoast used to be like the premier retailer back yes. in the day. Yes, yes. And they just got plowed over by so many different... Like, I think they actually got split up between several different companies, but, um, I mean, it's hard to find them now. It really is. Good ones, anyways. Oh, I agree with you. So... That's why I was I was happy that I found those two on Netflix, and I really enjoyed them. Nice. Because there's been a couple other ones that, I've saw, that I saw in there and started streaming, and I'm like, eh, I'm just not into this one. This one isn't... It's not really my style or anything, but mm. both of those were, both were really good. I, not, I, really, I really enjoyed them. Not to, uh, again, not to rattle the subject even further, but uh, did you ever see Clannad? I don't think so. I pro- I pro- and I probably oh. miss, I'm probably mispronouncing that name. Um, there was actually two different series. There was uh, Clannad, which is actually based off of a visual novel game, and um, there was a second part of it called Clannad After Story, and. Uh, Netflix actually had Clannad After Story on at one point in time. And uh, I actually liked it so much that I went out and bought the box set for both Clannad and Clannad After Story, which, oh, was, cool. which was not cheap, dude. Those. Uh, oh, yeah, some of that stuff can get pricey. No, dude, Clannad After Story alone, uh, factory sealed, 86 bucks. Oh, yeah. I believe it. I believe it. I, but it was worth it. It's a very, very good show. Very good show. So that would be my recommendation. Cool. Well, there we go. We have an anime section now in the middle of the show. (laughs) We're just keep packing shit on. Why the fuck not? It's our show. We can do whatever we want. (laughs) Bitches. Oh, no. I I wasn't too sure if I was going to mention it or not, but then I was like, eh, you know what? I am going to mention it because I actually did really enjoy him. And the Dance of the Vampire Bund was was just an awesome story. It It was just... Just an awesome story. Yeah, I mean the pro- the problem with that, though, like I said before, is I mean we could literally go on and on and on about oh, that shit, though. I easily could because I've Easy. seen I've seen a lot over the years. As have I. So, but let's get into what we're playing now. So, oh yeah, th- this is going to be a fun list. Cause... So one of the first things I haven't played a lot. So but I, I made up, I made yes. I made up for it. I probably won't be talking as much as you. Um, so I can probably knock out a couple of mine real quick here. I played some more Assassin's Creed 4 on the PS4, still enjoying the hell out of it. Ran into a couple of quests where I was just like, I wasn't real keen on them. Uh, But I can't remember if last week I had unlocked the underwater adventuring yet, and if I talked about that or not. Probably my least favorite part of the game is doing the underwater quests. 
I just I'm not a huge fan of the controls. Trying to hide from the sharks just really isn't fun. And I'll probably do some more just to get a better feel for it. But I'm um, just not a huge fan of those. That goddamn underwater shit, man. Yeah, and that ruins it every of, time. Which kind of stinks because it was out of all the stuff, and I was really interested in unlocking that that part of the game mm-hmm. because I had in sailing around, I had run across a bunch of different parts where you could do it, but I wasn't far enough along in the story to where it was unlocked where I could. So once I did, I did it a couple times, and I was like, yeah, I'm not really a fan of this. I go, damn, this sucks, because <laughs> I was kind of looking forward to it. So, oh, well. Uh, but then the other thing I was playing, God, more Assassin's Creed. This is sad. <laughs> so where's the, work, where's the variety, Joe? At work, at work, I bought a Kit Kat bar. And they are having um, Android contests where there's a code in there and you can go out to like android.com slash KitKat or whatever and see if you want anything. And I actually won um, two $5 gift certificates um, in the KitKat bars that I ate. So I gave one to my wife and I took one and I actually bought the Assassin's Creed Pirates on Android because it was four ninety nine. Hmm. So when I won that, I was like, yeah, what the hell? I go, let's get that since it had just come out and see how it is. It's actually not that bad. The graphics on my phone, because I have an HTC One phone on Sprint, the graphics are really, really good for being on my phone. It's fucking amazing how good the graphics are. It's really, really good. And uh, the combat's not that bad. You sail the ships around, and I don't want to say it's like the combat in the game, because it's, it's not. It's... It's a little more, you have your ships kind of sailing next to each other. You have, like, left or right dodging, and then you kind of control when you're firing and how you're aiming your your cannonballs. And if you can get a critical hit in, you can then do another type of attack. Uh, And that's about kind of what it seems like so far. I haven't played it extensively. Uh, But the combat's kind of fun. For $4.99... Well, for free for me. I had one of thanks. Thanks, Kit Kat. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad you're one of my favorite, favorite candy bars. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, <laughs> you know I, have, I have still, I have still not seen an Android Kit Kat yet. Really? That no. it's 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 just like the just like the Kit Kat pack that has a little Android guy on there, and when you open it up, there's a code in there that you can just type in on the website. And like I said, I've won. Twice now, so and what pisses me off is I think I actually threw the first one away because I was like, hey, I never went at this shit. I just threw it out. <laughs> so the next two that I got actually I won. So I might have thrown a winner out. But well, I never win at lottery tickets anyways. Thousand yeah. dollar winner, fuck it. Pisses away. So, <laughs> uh, but that's probably about all I played. I did download a pinball game on the PS4 earlier today. And before I came up here while I was watching the dog, I was playing it a little bit. Uh, the Pinball Arcade was actually released on the PS4 this week, and it came with one table. I think it was a Arabian Nights table or something like that. And I have to say, uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights uh, it was a Williams table. I have to say, I had downloaded the uh, Pinball Arcade on the PS3, and I did not like the way the controls were. I just didn't feel like the controls were tight enough, and it just it just didn't feel real good. I did enjoy on the 360 Pinball FX2. That was good. And I, and I had several tables on there, and the one table that the wife and I really liked was Epic Quest, which is almost like a little role-playing game where you could get better equipment for your character and then use that in fighting different creatures you would come across in the pinball game. If you like pinball games on the 360, definitely pick up Pinball FX2, definitely get Epic Quest. was well worth it. There were a bunch of actual tables that we bought on the 360 for Pinball FX2 and really we really liked it. Uh, but this was the pinball arcade that was out on the PS4, and it's funny because I think I had the pinball arcade on the PS3, and I just didn't like it on the PS4. It plays so much better, and I played that uh, Arabian Nights table probably for well over an hour, maybe two, uh, before I came up here, and I really liked it. 
I'm, yeah, I'm probably going to go downstairs and probably play that some more. I was showing it to my wife, and I go, this controls actually really good. The ball physics were really nice. The graphics were really cool. I, I felt that the flippers reacted when you pressed them. It actually felt like they were – it was like instantly reacting to you, whereas I felt they were a little – off on the PS3 on the on that on that on that pinball arcade version, mm-hmm. when in I, I think I had tried both um, pinball FX2 and pinball arcade, like the, I think I tried pinball arcade on the PS3 and FX2 on the 360, and I just I really liked the way it, uh, pinball FX2 felt like it had tighter controls on the on the 360 than the one on the PS3, but the this arcade one on the PS4 definitely reminded me of that 360 feel and definitely felt really, really tight and the graphics were outstanding. So I was actually maybe even thinking of picking up a few more tables uh, yeah. to play around with. So Nice. That is probably what I played for the week. I played a couple of more games here and there, just some small ones, just to screw around with. I was playing some browser-based games. Uh, maybe I'll go into those a little more next week because one of them was a candy game. Oh, and geez. when I show it to you, it's a candy game with ASCII graphics through the browser. Okay, because now you've got me interested. If you were saying you were <laughs> a fucking Candy Crush, no, I'm no, going to no. jump through this monitor. Can- my, my wife plays Candy Crush, and I, I, I have it loaded on my phone only to give her more lives. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand that fucking game. I know, I hate it's candy so crush. annoying. So I can't annoying. Care. But no, this... I will send you a link to what I played, and we will talk about it next week. Because cool. you have you have plenty of shit to talk about. So let me throw the ball to your court, and you go. Yeah, you there, go to town. There is a lot of shit on here for me. Uh, I'm gonna try to condense it down a little bit. Because if I wake, don't, wake wake me up when you're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I don't, we're gonna be here. Till, we're gonna literally be here till next year. I haven't eaten dinner yet. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll start with the two Android games. Um, which these are interesting because I, I think I had this conversation with you and Brian once before. I have actually, up until Terraria, which was last week when I was absent, mm-hmm. uh, I have not purchased an Android game in almost a year and a half, period. Uh, I did drop the coin on Terraria and Android. i not very impressed. It's... I, Clearly, the fluidity is not going to be the same as the PC version, um, but I just thought it was really cumbersome to play. I and I and see now, and I have it on my Kindle, and it's not as bad. I didn't mind it on my Kindle, if you remember me saying that. So I wonder if it's right. mainly because of your the screen size. Maybe if you were playing it on a seven inch tablet or I was. I'm, oh, you were. Oh, I was playing on my N seven. Yeah. And oh, was, you still didn't like it? No. no. Huh. I actually thought it was more clunky to mind shit. In the it, Android version, it, it was a little, but it's it's a tablet. It's not going to be. I know, I, I know, I know, and I, and I'm getting sick and tired of seeing these HUD controls. I, that just annoys the piss out of me. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they're not self-explanatory. They're, they're not. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm not very impressed with. That. I'm gonna stick with the PC version, which, by the way, I am making extraordinary strides on, and we we still have to schedule a. Uh, yeah, we haven't done any multiplayer, multiplayer yet. Yeah, I haven't had yet. I in two in the past two weeks, pretty much everything I've played is either on my phone or on the PS4 or just right. downstairs. I really haven't been on well, my I mean, computer that much. Well, I mean, you've got everything blown over there. So. Yeah. Um, but there's that. Uh, then I picked up Frozen Freefall, which is a um, uh, title from Disney. Uh, it's Disney? Basic, yeah, it's a Disney title. Okay. It, it, okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> I know. You me, peaked, me, you've peaked my interest. <laughs> me, yeah, me playing a Disney title. Go fucking figure, right? Yeah, because I don't... I'm not that kind of guy. So I'm, look, I'm looking this up right now. Okay, so this is another Bejeweled clone. Okay, which, oh, okay. I, which I guess is now called a Match 3 type game. Which yeah. I, I, I don't like that. It's a fucking Bejeweled clone. So, but the thing is, is... They have tweaked and added so many things to the core mechanic in this game. It makes it absolutely addicting. Like, if you can remember the first time you played Bejeweled, and if you got hooked into it, 
Kate Dad and amplify it by about tenfold, and this is what you're going to get in Frozen Free Fall. I, I was never hooked on Bejeweled. Oh, I was. I was. No. I was completely hooked. Um, the re There's a couple things I like about this. One, the jewel switching is actively responsive. And what I mean by that is you can switch your jewels while your while other ones are currently clearing out. Yes, okay, and I you see could, what you're saying. And, and you could not do that in any other clone. Because once you made it clear, you couldn't move another gem until the other ones refilled. This one lets you just go ahead and swipe them until the fucking cows come home, man. So you can chain together massive combos quick. Um, which I like that because I like to dart the board quick. That knack game that I downloaded that was supposed to supplement and unlock things in the knack for the PS4 mm-hmm. plays that way. Nice. You can you can be matching things as other things are blowing up. I've noticed that, and that was one of the first times I think I ever saw that. Yeah, and I like that. I, I, I played tons of match three games before like this, and I was, and I and I was like, huh, that's a little interesting. That's yeah. a little different. Like why why can't I just go ahead and move this one? Because I see it here. Why right. can't I, why can't I do it? And now you can. Um, the clearing parameters for the boards are actually a little interesting too. Uh, you have the typical ones where you got to get a certain score within a certain certain number of moves. Um, then you have the ones where you gotta clear the board and get the score as quick as you can within a time limit. But then there's other things like, uh, you know, clear it by block type. So you have to remove a, a certain number of reds and a certain number of greens. Um, then there's other ones where they have like ice blocks, where the ice block the ice can only be removed if you do a three where the block is in the ice, but it doesn't actually remove the gem; it just takes the ice off of it. So then you can clear it. Um, and it they're really... It, and there's also the power-ups, too. The only thing I don't like about this game is the freemium model. Because uh, you only get five lives. If you run out, you have to pay real money to get more. Um, they will only ever give you two samples of a power-up. You never get those refilled. If you need more of them, you got to pay for them. Um... Some of the maps are clearly designed so that you have to buy a power-up. Right, that's that's just how it works. Um, if you don't buy a power-up, you can still clear the board, but it's just exceedingly difficult to do. I know there's been a couple boards. I, I'm up in like the mid-30 levels. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a couple boards where I've wasted about 20 guys. Oh, wow. Trying to get it back. And once you lose all five of your guys, it takes about 45 minutes to get them replenished. Now, you have a PSP. Yes. Did you ever play Puzzle Quest on the PSP? Yes, I did. And did that like was... It? Yes, I did. That was one of my favorite games on the PSP. Yes, that uh, game... In fact, I actually have... I have a copy of it on my memory card now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw, I saw, I think that's probably the game in my PSP right now. <laughs> if, I was to go, if I was to go look and, look and pull the disc out, I think that is the game that is actually in there. Yeah. Um, I did like that game a lot. So, um, match threes have always been... I, I love Bejeweled. Um, yeah, I, I played Bejeweled back in the day, but I was never addicted to it. Puzzle Quest was probably one of the first match threes, if that's what we're going to call them. That seems like the, the, the name that kind of fits, I, which I'm I, not really... I don't know if I like it either, but you I know, don't, it's the easiest I way to describe them. Um, but Puzzle Quest, I would say, would probably be the first one that got me addicted to it, and I think it was because of the whole RPG element that it had, mm-hmm. because of the different spells that you were casting, and it just seemed that it was just so much more than just a simple match three. Yeah. I, you would try to, you know, tactically match up certain colors if you wanted to cast a certain spell and do something particular with your, you know, with your character and all the different things that you had in that game. Um, the mount that you had, the armor and weapons you had, and the you know everything, just everything to build your character was just outstanding, yeah. and it just it just made that whole that whole match three piece just to, to took it to the next level as far as I'm concerned. But at this point in the game, the core mechanic of a match three needs supplements. You yes. can't. It's not enough to just put out another bejeweled game because it's just gonna you know, pop cap games is gone. Yeah, you know, whatever they did is being seen through other games. It's not good enough to just say, "Here's Bejeweled again." You need a supplement to that core mechanic. Frozen, right. uh, going back to the game at hand, Frozen gives you that supplement. 
and I really feel like this game sets a bar for match three supplements. If you do a match three game and it does not come on par with Frozen, it's probably not that good. So, I know, want to maybe check out check that out then. Yeah, I, I would. It, it's like I said, the freemium models there, bullshit, whatever. Um, which is why on my my review on the Play Store, I gave it four stars out of five. Uh, had it not been freemium, I would have gave it five. Right. Uh, but other than that, it's a fantastic game, and it's kid friendly. So if you got kids, you know, that play on a tablet, just you know, throw it in front of them, let them go. Uh, that clears the Android stuff out. <laughs> jumping over to jumping over to the PC for just one game. Uh, I did pick up Gone Home, which I had mentioned on the previous episode that I was on, uh, which would have been the week before last. And uh, I I cannot say enough good things about this game, and I and I and I can't say anything good about it without rehashing what else everybody else has said about the game. Yeah, and don't say too much because with everybody, I'm going to have to just suck it up and just buy this. You are. Absolutely. So. I, I will say this, and we did say this before we started the show. The game, it's so organic in nature that it's scary. Yeah. And, I, and I know that people that have reviewed this game have said it's not a horror game. It's not. It is not a horror game. There is no antagonist aspect to this game. It literally is nothing more than an on rail story. But it sounds like it really can hit you from what it sounds like. It really Oh dude, it hits you on such a human level. Yeah, that's what it sounds like from what I've from from some from listening to some of the different podcasts and people talking about this one, it, it just sounds like it kinda hits that little string inside of you that, you know, you're you know is there but isn't really activated by too many things. Right, and, and you're gonna come to points in the story where you're gonna you're gonna laugh your ass off because you know damn well that you're relating to what this person is saying. Right. You know, it's gonna parallel something in your life, but then you're gonna get to certain points in the story where you're like, "Wow, that that hits a part of me that was a very negative experience in my life." And then you, that's where you start to draw the emotional correlation to the story, and that's what drags it on. And it's very, very good. It is short, though. Two hours is what it took me. Oh, really? Two? two. Okay. Yep, two hours. Uh, I did pick it up on sale. Uh, it was 10 bucks. I think originally it's 15 or 20 No, it's 20 because I'm, it's 20 I'm looking at okay. right now, yeah. yeah. Steam, has, Steam, Steam has over 9.99 right now, and I think that's until January 2nd. Yeah, I would get it on sale. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's worth the 20 I think it's a 10 Um, Two hours for 20 is a bit, bit much. Right. And graphically, the game is superb. Story-wise, it's unparalleled. Uh, I just feel like 20 is a little too high for this kind yeah. of game. Uh, but yeah, it, it, seriously, it, it, I, I'm not going to say too much about this because, like I said, I can't say anything that people already have not said about the game. It's fucking amazing. It really is. So, now, did, did you buy it through Steam or who did you buy it through? Because it looks like good old or Humble Bundle, because Humble actually has the Humble Store now and they have it for nine ninety nine as well. I haven't checked GOG yet. I bought direct. Okay. Uh, they do give you the option to buy direct, which I think delegates through Humble, uh, but I did not get it through Steam. All right. So I, I definitely pick it up. Uh, it's going to be the best two hours of your life, man. Seriously. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get that. And, and I'm guessing you play. You, considering it was two hours, you probably played it in one sitting. Oh, absolutely. I just. I literally. I made a pot of coffee, and grabbed some biscotti and sat down in front of my PC for two hours and just played it straight. Nice. It, it, it was a. It was amazing. So, that being said, I'm gonna jump to the two big ones, and I'm gonna try to make these quick because if I don't, then we're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> So, as much as we don't like GameStop, unfortunately, they are the only only brick-and-mortar store around me that still sells PSP games. And as I've mentioned before on this podcast, I love my PSP. I love Sony handhelds. Um, I had the fortunate ability to pick up Fantasy Star Portable, a brand-new copy, mind you. Cool. And Persona 3 Portable. Nice. So... And we were talking. We were, we were talking before the podcast, right? And I, was, I was saying I have the original Persona on the PlayStation, on the original PlayStation, the PlayStation One, if you want to recall it that. So, Fantasy Star Portable. I'm gonna start with this one because I haven't played it all that much. Uh, I played it about 
three hours. Uh, I like what I see in the game. I had played a demo of it before. Uh, I just have not invested too much time into it. Because Persona 3 has consumed my fucking soul. Mm -hmm. In every respect possible. Nice. You take the visual novel aspect, which we all know I love those games, mix it with a complex RPG, and I'm done. I, that That's it right there. The, the game has hooked me completely. And that's exactly what it is. And it's a long fucking game. Long game. It literally spans an entire school year. Emulated, of course. Yes. Uh, but it actually keeps track, like, you know, 31 days in a month. You're playing 31 days in the game, you know? Um, this is actually my first time playing Persona. I have not played any Persona game prior to this. I've always heard really good things about it. I've kind of looked at it. I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. Um, I picked it up at GameStop, scored major street, street cred with the clerk, which was nice. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Oh, yeah, she went on and on and on about it. And I'm like, yeah, I've never played it. And then she proceeded to just try to ruin the game for me. And I felt like I had to tell her, look, I, I haven't played this before. Don't yeah. tell me this. Yeah, I was going to say, tell me this shit. I'm buying this. Don't tell me the end of the fucking <laughs> game, idiot. I'm going to throw it back in your face. <laughs> fucking stupid. It's, I know. Okay. This is, oh, I'm, okay. I'm not but saying anything. Continue, I, carry on. I think she was just excited. Okay. But we'll, let, we'll, we'll put that aside. So I bring it home. And I actually have the hook, the component hookup, so I can put the PSP on my big screen. Nice. And um, which unfortunately does not work very well. But I played Persona Three for thirteen and a half hours straight. That I, is a marathon. I did not go to the bathroom and I did not eat. <laughs> okay, I've only done that. Three other times in my life. Yeah, this, I don't. I don't even know the. I mean, this is not the longest though. Parasite Eve holds that record. Wow. Uh twenty six hours. I don't. I don't think. I, I don't know if I've ever done that. Twenty six hours. Chrono Trigger's next at uh, twenty three. And um, Final Fantasy three on the Super Nintendo comes in next. Uh, Persona 3 being fourth place with 13 and a half. Um, but I am, I mean, this game just plowed over everything I was doing. I'm just like, okay, I come home, Persona. Uh, I go to the bathroom, I'm taking my PSP with me. Uh, <laughs> it's that kind of thing. You know, I'm washing the dishes and I'm kind of like, oh, dishes are done. I got the PSP sitting right next to the fucking sink. I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's it's an amazing game. Uh, and I like it so much that uh, I'm actually going to get a hold of my buddy's PS Vita, which we were talking about. Right. And I'm going to pick up... jealous for. Yeah, and I'm going to pick up uh, Persona 4 Gold Edition yeah. for the P PS Vita. So, That's awesome. Yeah, I I did some serious gaming. And I, I you know what? It was great, man. Cool. And I'm going to be playing Persona after we get off of here, by the way. So. That's crazy. I got the coffee ready. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. I, I mean, that pretty much covers the past two weeks. I mean, I, I skipped out last week. So, uh, well, last week I skipped out because of work. Right. Um, which I pretty much did that whole week. And then this week, I, or last week, I kind of felt like I had to make up for it. So I just, I, I plowed through as many games as I could. Yeah, you, you definitely did. You made up for it because I definitely have not been playing that much. I have not had any 13-hour marathons <laughs> here in a while. So, Well, you know, I don't think anybody should be going around saying, what did you do? I played video games for 13 and a half hours. <laughs> That's not exactly a, a social crowning achievement, Joe. No, especially if it's not your full-time job. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're trying to attract mates. Yeah, exactly. As, but, as I am. You know what, though? That almost makes me want to pick up Persona 3 and do it out, play it on my PS3, because I haven't had anything good on the PS3. I wonder if I can actually download that through the store you, and get that. I don't, know, look. I don't know, but I'm telling you, man, you've got to be fucking careful. If you don't have the time to dedicate to it, you've got to be careful. Yeah. Because you will get sucked in. So, there's, there's where I'm at. Cool. All right, well, I guess we can move on to what we want to play now. 
you have a couple things down here. I have I didn't put anything down here because I just haven't been able to think about what I want to play. And there were a couple of games that popped into my mind, and I didn't write them down, and I can't think of them right now. So I will let you chat about what you're what you want to play now. Uh, well, I obviously already mentioned uh, Persona Four, uh, which I will be picking up this Friday. I'm not sure if I'm going to play it this Friday because, like I said, I'm still trying to plow through P3. Right. Uh, but I will have it on hand. So now how many hours did you have, have you actually put into Persona 3? Uh, on my save file, I have... I don't. My PSP is across the room right now. I, I can't... I don't remember the exact number. It's got to be close to about 40, 40 or 45 hours. That's not bad. That's no, not bad. I no. was thinking you were going to be up around the 80 to 100 mark. Not yet, but I will okay. be. Uh, I, I kind of I figure it with those games you would be. I know Persona 4, they're saying minimum 100. Yes, I've heard that as well. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that one. And again, I really like those games where I can just, you know, if anybody has seen my Steam profile and looked at my Skyrim hours, you probably yeah. think that's all I do is play Skyrim because <laughs> I'm pushing 300 hours on that. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm not... I'm, like a quarter of that, if that even. So, yeah, we're looking forward to P4. Um, I did earlier in the show. I mentioned I picked up a visual novel, a Japanese visual novel. Uh, Koi, I'm gonna try to do this, and if my pronunciation is really bad, please send me hate mail. Correct me. Uh, Koi to Senkyo to chocolate, which not good to me because that's yeah, how I would have said it. That it works for me. <laughs> um, this was actually a. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what the visual novel is about because I saw an episode of the anime show, and the anime is an adaptation of the visual novel. Okay. Uh, but the visual novel is so hard to get hold of that I, I – and, and everybody that has played it is kind of cagey about it. Like they just don't want to share any information. It just makes no sense to me. Um, but I did get a hold of the game, and I did get a hold of the anime show. So we're gonna we're gonna play the visual novel and then we're gonna watch the show afterwards. Cool, sounds good. I guess the one thing I guess I could say that I want to play will probably be Gone Home because I'll probably pick that up. Oh yeah, dude, trust me, you, you need to play that and let me know what you think. The other games I was looking at that were on sale um, on Steam was the Divinity series, like Divine Divinity. Oh yeah. I had never played those RPGs, and they had a Divinity Anthology, which was Divine Divinity, Beyond Divinity, and Divinity 2, mm -hmm. and it's like 10 bucks. Oh, hell, dude. I was thinking of picking those up and giving those a shot. So I guess you could say that could be on my what I want to play list. I'll say Gone Home and maybe the Divinity series. So... Sounds good. Hey, well, I mean, that, it looks like we're both kind of locked in for decent gameplay. Oh, I got so many freaking games I want to play and so many things that I'm still working on. I haven't gone back to FIFA since I lost that one match. Oh, I've been so wrapped up with <laughs> Assassin's Creed. I've been so wrapped up with Assassin's Creed 4. I'm like well over, I think around 45% of the full game complete. and I'm probably more than halfway through the storyline. I think I'm on um, like chapter seven or whatever you want to call it in there, and I think there's like thirteen. Oh wow! I think there, I think there's sequences or whatever they call it, whatever they refer that to them as. Mm -hmm. I think it's like sequence seven. Um, and I think there's thirteen. So I'm more than halfway through the game, but, and I'm, I've done so much side stuff. I'm probably, you know, like I said, forty five percent complete with everything. Nice. So I've I've done a lot of side stuff in that game as well, and it's it's just fun. Everything in that game is just fun. So. Speaking we're not, we're not, we're not going to go back to Assassin's Creed 4. I've talked enough about it in a previous podcast. <laughs> Speaking of side quests, can I just mention how many fucking side quests there are in Persona 3? I mean, yes. it's, it's ridiculous. Mm, I can't, ridiculous. I can't that's how they fucking, get all those hours. I can't keep up with it, man. <laughs> I can't, and, and then the worst part is they actually set, like, some of the quests have to be completed by a certain date in the game. Really? Yeah. You can't. They're not just arbitrarily open. Like if you pick one, like let's say you pick one that's in April, you have two in-game weeks to finish the quest. And if you don't get, if you don't complete those quests in that time frame, you can't go back and select them again. You get an oh, additional. Wow. 
you get a new set of quests that you can do. And some of them are marked as open and you can do them whatever, but most of them are marked by date. And if you don't do them by then, you can never fucking go back and do it unless you start over again. Speaking of which, the other cool thing about Persona, there is a new game. There is a new game plus option, and I wanted to say something about that really quick. Uh, for those that don't know, New Game Plus is where you run through a game and then start over with your stats from a previous playthrough. Oh, nice. a, lot, a lot of games fuck this mechanic up horribly because they'll only carry over certain things. Case in point, the worst game I can think of, Final Fantasy X-2. Why is it that my dress fears don't... Uh, the dress fear levels don't carry over? Right. That's bullshit. Chrono Trigger has the best example to date I've seen of a new game plus where literally every fucking thing carries over. Everything. Stats, equipment, time played, items, all that stuff. Um, Persona apparently has an aspect similar to that where uh, your social links... Uh, well, if you max out a social link, you can keep the key items and then things like stats and items and all that stuff roll over. Um but then you can play through and go down the different, you know, social paths and the, and the visual novel aspect of it to get the other key items. So I'm I'm really looking forward to see how that plays out. Cool. So I yeah, this is definitely going to turn into a hundred hundred fifty hour investment easy. Well, I'm considering you're probably getting these on the cheap. Considering they're I don't want to probably not too cheap, but um, probably much cheaper. You're probably definitely getting your money's worth out of these games. P3 was not new when I got it. Uh, it was a used copy, and used even still. This game goes for about twenty six bucks. Yeah, uh, which is understandable. It's I, if I remember correctly, it is the second highest rated game for the PSP ever. Oh really? I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. Second highest rated highest rated game, which frankly I think it should have been the first. Um, Fantasy Star was brand new. Uh, it was cheaper than P3. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I was about 22, I believe. 20 or 22. I can't remember which. Uh, but yeah, definitely get the money's worth out of this stuff. And that's the important thing. So you're playing Persona 3 Portable, right? Yep. Don't look on Amazon. Uh, is it cheaper? $15.99. New? Or used? It's not saying used. Hmm. I guess that's the price I'd pay for wanting it from a brick and mortar store immediately. <laughs> God damn! It. Thirty thirty-five new, fifteen used. One collectible is forty bucks. Oh, I, well, there you go. That if that gives you any idea. I mean, shit. Even Glide has that game for like twenty-eight dollars. They have um, Shin Megami Tensei um, Persona 2 Innocent Sin for the PSP out here as well. Is that a is that NTSC or is that PAL? I thought that was PAL. It's not saying it's PAL here. Platform PSP, Sony PSP. What's the, does it say what its region code is? So I'm not, I'm not looking. I'm not looking are, at it. are there region codes? I oh yeah. Uh, yeah. On the PSP, there are. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, if you do not have uh, custom brew uh, dashboard on the PSP, you're locked into regions like you are with DVD players. I'm not saying anything. Considering this is normal Amazon.com, I'm not seeing anything here that's telling me that it is not for. This item is also available. Do, 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 do. Hmm. I'll have to look into this a little more. It oh my god! Say it's not. Joe, that's the last thing I need right now is another fucking Persona game lined up. Let me see. I've already got two. <laughs> well, it's, oh, let's see. Now this one's twenty-one twenty-nine, so it's actually a little more than three. I we'll have to look it. at this. Yeah. I'll have to look at this later. I don't see anything that is telling me it's not NTSC, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, but there, here. yeah, but there are region codes for that, man. They're just not listed on the, on the cases or anything. 
I don't think the Vita is region coded. The PSP might have been. Uh, I don't think it is either. The only previously released Persona game to never see a formal release in North America is finally available for PSP, and that's Persona 2 Innocent Sin. That's, it says that, right? So I'm thinking this must be North American release. Hmm. There's so many versions of P2, though. Yeah. There's, I think there's regular P2, and then there's FES, and then there's whatever one you were looking at, and then there's another. I mean, it, it's almost as bad as fucking Street Fighter. I will give you the link in chat, and I think we're pretty much to the end of the show. Absolutely. Oh, all right. Before well, we start, everybody before we start can find like, us like we... Before we start sounding like Sony and Persona fanboys. <laughs> well, I, I've only played part of the first one. I never finished that first one on the PlayStation. It was crazy back then. I thought it was a kind of an interesting concept. I know that's changed some in some of the later ones, so... Um, but everybody could send us some email. Give us some feedback. Let us know. Um, Greg's got the uh, RSS feed working. He's going to get some of the shows up for us this week. I'm going to try to post some Let's Plays and everything maybe this coming week. Hopefully my dog's feeling a little better and I can do some more things. Um, follow us on Twitter. What I'm playing now. Drop the G. Uh, hopefully I can get the Facebook page working on. i got a lot of work for me to do. And in the new year that's going to be hopefully one of the things I can get done. So, what's that? New Year's resolutions, man. Yes, I know. Yeah, that was, and I have a lot of them this year. So this is this is going to be for an make for an interesting year. <laughs> so everybody, go play us some games. Send us some emails and let us know what you're playing now. Have a good one, everybody, and we will see you next week. Peace.